What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about NG style. So in any type of front-end development, more than likely you are going to want to lean more towards NG class. And that's because we are actually we're, uh, acting on the real CSS. In an NG class, you're actually, majority of the time you're actually acting on CSS, whether it is your own CSS or whether it is your uh, bootstrap, any type of CSS. But with ng style, what is going to happen is essentially this is Angular's way of having what's called like a style one liner, or I call it like a one liner. If you use one liners, it typically it's in your own app. You're just trying to insert one style somewhere in your application. You're not trying to actually act on the CSS that's in your front end. You're just inserting like a one liner somewhere, just trying to do like a, maybe like a quick fix, or maybe you're not, you're like me, you're not much of a CSS person and you just need to insert like a little one liner. NG style is going to, you know, have your back on that. And it's, uh, almost exactly the same as CSS. So if you look up here, CSS is exact same. You have this class and you have this cool indicator and cool indicator is indicative of our actual CSS. But because in an ng style, we don't have actual CSS and it's a one liner, our CSS is going to be here and here. So essentially, just like any other property, what's gonna happen? It's gonna check for truthiness right here and if truthiness is true, funny, it's going to go ahead and do the, the binding on this uh, property. And as if you had it in HTML, we actually have this. It's a style and in here you have uh, your background and that's essentially what's going to happen. In CSS, you have one line styles as well too. In Angular, is it going to abstract that for us as well as give us um, nice ways to toggle it with Booleans and data that is coming from the back end. So once again, just to kind of reiterate, style, we also have ng style as well too. ng style, just like ng class, is a little bit more old school, but there's more functionality with it. It can be very robust. You can chain a bunch of these ternary operators in here and you can have multiple patterns of logic. So if you want to have an ng, if you want to have a type of style where there's many ternary operators and there's a bunch of logic, let's say you had three of these and if they toggled on some type of thing, you could do that as well too and you can put it all in one line. Just keep in mind here, the only difference between these two, like the ng style and the dot, this, I think this looks a little bit better when you have just regular ng style or when you have ng class, you have to make it into an object and that's kind of like, the thing, I guess, like whenever you, how to remember ng style versus ng class is uh, ng style. Whenever there's the ng in between style and class, sounds, that's cool, style and class. You're going to have this object. You're gonna have, it's going to be within an object right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead in here and we're going to add another Boolean. So I talked about um, type checking in my previous, um, video but we're going to go ahead and add another one and interfaces once again an interface is simply just a lot this interface doesn't exact actually exist like what does that what do i mean by this interface doesn't really exist well in a class actually exists as an object this class like when the program is executed there is memory being stored and it's being allocated onto the heap an interface doesn't actually do that. It's not an actual thing that you can kind of, you know, manipulate. It's just there to kind of make sure that we are following the rules when we are creating our Pokemons. And for instance, just, you know, for iteration, I know that we've talked like a bunch about this, but an interface is very important. Let's just say I go in here and I make a Pokemon and I want to check whether this Pokemon is stylish. I want my Pokemon to be, you know, have some fashion sense. I want them to be, you know, have nice clothes on. I do not want non-stylish, non-classy Pokemon in my collection. I think anybody can agree with that. You see, you get this right here. Object literal may only specify known properties. Essentially what TypeScript is saying is, 
hey, uh, you put something into this object that's not supposed to be there. Um, and you do this, once again, just for repetition. We do this because if you are working in a huge um, project, what if you made a Pokemon class and somebody else added another uh, property to it and it broke everything and there was no type checking there to kind of make sure that it was right? It would be very annoying. So ex exactly, that is why we use type checking. Same thing. These are just little guardrails to make sure that our is stylish is a Boolean, just to make sure our name is a string. So going here, oh, we've already got is stylish. So we're gonna go down here. Is stylish, it's gonna be false. Go down here, same exact thing. False. Okay, and it looks like our type checking is ready to go. So we've already got some for loops right here. Let's go into here and I'm going to copy these down and let's just copy these down. This is not gonna make any sense. Like nobody would do this in real life, but we're just going to kind of practice what is going on here. So for the first one, we're gonna have style. Then we're going to have background color. And you could set this just to background. You could set this to, uh, I think another, you know, color, whatever you want to, but in any CSS property, it doesn't exactly have to be the CSS property uh, you know, that I am using. You could literally use whatever one that you want to. And here we're going to add background color. So what we want to do is we want to go in here, we're gonna have our Pokemon, and is our Pokemon stylish? Okay, so now that we have that, what I am going to do is I'm going to paste in a purple hex code. I think Purple is a way cooler color, and we actually need to change one of our Squirtles. Squirtle is definitely, Pikachu is stylish. Squirtle is definitely a stylish Pokemon. Eh, Charmander, not so much. Charmander is not a very stylish Pokemon, I don't think. But feel free to change to whatever you want to. Okay, if you look at it, we've got it to toggle our, uh, this is the first one. This is the second one. This is the third one where the actual toggling is happening. Now let's talk about ng style. It's pretty much gonna be the same exact thing. It's not gonna be hardly any different. So what we want to do, instead of ng style, we're gonna change this to ng, or ng class, we're gonna change this to ng style. Then what we want to do is we want to go into here. We're going to, we've already got our object ready. Now, instead of moving the actual CSS the CSS property over, we are going to move it over to, or we are going to actually include the actual CSS attribute. And if that's not the right term, please let me know down in the comments so other people can know as well too. Not much of a CSS guy myself, but it, I think it's important. So same thing, we're gonna go up here, we're gonna copy and paste our hex number. And if it's not, it's going to be empty. And we need to change this to is stylish because it is not cool anymore. It is stylish. So if everything worked out correctly, that should be good to go. Let me go ahead and check in here. And would you look at that beautiful, we can now distinguish between which Pokemon are cool, which Pokemon are stylish. Hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.